I keep hitting the limits of what today's video AI models can actually do, and it still surprises me every time. There's no shortage of big claims. Models that understand prompts better, do everything automatically, or add advanced features. This tutorial takes a critical look at video AI and tries to master a complex task using just one example. Will it work? We'll find out. Let me start by showing you what this tutorial is about. In step one, I'll walk you through the setup and the first test runs. Step two looks at possible weak points from those results and builds an alternative approach. Step three explains how I prepared the base image used for all tests. And finally, I'll share a few lessons learned along the way. To make sure the setup reflects the current landscape, I began on the artificial analysis website where most top tier video AI platforms are listed. That's where you find the competition. In total, 14 models, including new ones like LTX2, Ray3, and VO3.1. Just to be clear, in this tutorial, I won't show how to use those platforms, only the results. Covering all 14 in depth would be far too much. If you want details on specific tools, you'll find plenty of tutorials and examples on my YouTube channel. Some of the relevant links are in the description. The next step was about repetition. One result means nothing. Two are mandatory. Three start to show a pattern. But only repeated testing of the exact same setup produces results you can actually trust. That's how one video quickly became four, then six, then nine. Nine runs with LTX2, nine with Kling 2.5 Turbo, nine with Seadance Pro, nine with Midjourney Video. You get the idea. It wasn't just about mindless repetition of the same prompt. The key was to refine the prompt from test to test, based on how the AI reacted. What began as a simple input, just a camera movement, became more complex each round. Test two added new variables, test three even more, and the final version was a fully detailed prompt describing every cinematic element in the scene. All of it followed the master prompt guideline you see here, which I developed together with ChatGPT. My goal wasn't to create yet another cat clip, another smiling face, or another shiny sports car. I'm looking for genuine challenges, complex physics-based sequences where the AI still struggles. That means patience, time, the will to optimise, and yes, a lot of credits. And that's always the painful part. Credits are expensive, and testing like this burns through them fast. Let me visualise today's example for you. A lone archer stands on uneven ground, longbow fully drawn. In front of him, half hidden in the fog, rises a fortress barely visible through the haze. At the top of one of its towers flickers a small fire. A torn flag whips in the wind. The whole scene feels tense and almost mythical, like the final calm before an epic battle. Mist drifts past in slow waves. The archer, clearly a scout of a much larger army, tilts the bow slightly upward to find balance, glances to the right to check the wind, then lowers it again and releases the shot. The arrow accelerates toward the tower, cutting cleanly through a small metal ring on its platform. The camera, placed just behind and to the right of the archer, follows the arrow's flight as if from its own point of view, moving with it through the fog as it passes the ring. The focal point always stays on the arrow itself. That way the tower, initially blurred in the background, becomes sharper as the shot progresses. If you reduce the scene to its core, it really has only five elements. The archer, the bow, the arrow, a metal pole with a ring, and the fortress tower. That's the entire cast of this small cinematic showdown. Could this be considered a complex setup? Absolutely. But that's the point. If I want to direct a sequence, I want to act as the editor myself, not hand everything over to the AI with a casual do something command. On the LTX2 platform, for example, the documentation says longer, detailed prompts lead to better, more accurate results. The recommended length is around 200 words, with clear guidance. Use detailed chronological descriptions of actions and scenes, define camera movements and angles, describe lighting, setting, and character features. Only that level of precision lets you build a sequence that truly follows the intended dramatic arc of your storyboard. 
Whether that actually works, we'll find out in a moment with the image to video test, based on a single start frame. For orientation, in the lower left clip, you'll see the pure camera definition. Camera is stationary. Upper left, you'll see a short prompt version that simply defines. An arrow flies toward the tower. Camera follows that movement. Upper right shows a long version of 111 words that fully describes every visual and cinematic detail of that same scene. Let's start with a tough one, the new LTX2 model. Here you can define long prompts and the platform even supports 4K output at up to 50 frames per second. The lighting and shadows are well balanced, giving the scene a clear photorealistic depth. Unfortunately, the bow deforms during the shot, which means the core task of this tutorial isn't fulfilled. Kling 2.5 Turbo goes all in. When you define the camera as static, the bow remains drawn. When you let the camera follow the movement, the scene becomes dynamic and tense. The task is executed almost perfectly, though it feels a bit like a cinematic video game. Mid-journey video gets most of it right. The release looks realistic. The shot feels grounded and not over-dramatized. I especially like the camera rotation around the character. It adds an unexpected perspective. Still, the mission isn't fully accomplished. The arrow heads toward the tower, but that's where it stops. Moon Valley's version adds a dose of unintentional comedy. You can almost sense the confusion of the character, unsure of what to do next. Colors shift wildly, the image trembles, and the morphing is obvious. The goal of the tutorial? Not achieved. Pika 2.2 doesn't fire a single arrow. The AI seems more interested in stretching limbs and exploring camera angles. Objects bend, extend, and sometimes random elements pop into the frame. Again, the goal isn't met. Pixverse 5, on the other hand, delivers a few surprisingly strong takes, especially the top left one, which turns the arrow into a kind of flaming projectile. The physics of the bowstring release are well done, though in two versions the arrow still refuses to fly. Technically solid, but the main task remains incomplete. The next model shows real potential, especially in draft mode. However, some of its sub-features still raise a few questions. In the lower left version, the arrow gets stuck mid-flight. The upper left take, however, is outstanding, particularly the moment when the character looks down before starting to move. If you overlook a few visual glitches in the upper right clip, Luma Dream Machine Ray 3 technically passes the tutorial's challenge. Only the arrow's trajectory feels slightly off. Hilo 2 stays locked in a static camera pose and adds a few unexpected yoga-like stretches. That same reflex appears again in the top left version. In the upper right clip with a detailed prompt, you can almost sense how the model executes each instruction step by step. Technically, the task is fulfilled, though the performance still needs polish. The shift in depth of field, however, is handled remarkably well. Runway Gen 4 delivers a beautiful, photorealistic tone, the lighting, the clouds, the ambience, all perfectly atmospheric. The human motion feels believable. The problem lies in the bow itself. Its structure warps, and new, unintended objects appear mid-scene. The tutorial's goal remains unmet. Seedance Pro surprised me. If you've followed my channel, you know I use this platform a lot. Across the three clips shown here, and six additional tests, two things stand out. The tension and release of the bowstring are handled impressively, but in several versions, the arrow refuses to take off. Some shots look more 3D rendered than cinematic. The tutorial's challenge remains unresolved. I have to admit, Veo 3.1 was the biggest disappointment. The visuals are gorgeous. The clouds, the light, the ground texture, everything looks cinematic. But the archer never actually releases the shot. Instead, they just point the arrow toward the tower like a teaching assistant showing where to aim. The figure itself feels less realistic than in LTX2. Honestly, I expected Veo 3.1 to nail this test. Looking at the results from Vidu 2, you can almost see the model struggling. Movements feel stiff and fragmented, as if the whole animation were fighting itself. The laws of physics clearly don't apply here. 
Unless, of course, we're talking about the whistling controlled arrow weapon from Guardians of the Galaxy. The attempt to complete the task is there, but when the arrow morphs mid flight into a metal ring, the clip becomes unusable. One 2.5 leaves you wanting to shout, Just shoot already! The upper versions mix hesitation with confusion. Yes, technically the arrow flies toward the tower, but barely. You could repeat the test 10 more times and maybe one would finally work, but the credit costs make that unrealistic. And then there's Sora too. The platform simply refused to participate, flagging every attempt with a polite but firm, I can't do that. A shame really, because OpenAI's new model shows enormous potential. Still, for this test, the result is clear. Task not completed. So after watching all the clips, we're left with one simple question. Which of these models actually managed to handle the challenge? The answer is in the final matrix, and it's more revealing than you might think. So what's the alternative? The keyword is start and end frame. Anyone choosing that path has a slightly easier time, but not necessarily better results. The AI still has to fill in the space between those two frames. And what happens in between is largely left to its own sense of invention, or let's call it controlled chaos. The results confirm this. No matter how many tests I ran, even with the top tier models, something was always off. The hands, the release of the bowstring, the speed and motion of the arrow, the focus shift of the tower, or the integration of the final image. Something always broke the chain of realism. Let's look at a few examples. Because the overall execution was so inconsistent, I'll narrow it down to a direct comparison between Hilo 2, Kling 2.1, Pixverse 5, and Veo 3.1. Assuming, of course, that the platform supports start and end frame to begin with, Hilo 2 delivered the most convincing result. Not perfect, but impressive. Kling's implementation feels solid overall, though the handling of the bow looks less realistic, and the arrow disappears midway through. VO 3.1 misread the task again, turning the action into another aim without release sequence. Completely wrong proportions, same mistake. Pixverse 5, on the other hand, surprised me. The arrow's movement looked slightly strange, but the rest was remarkably solid. Both Midjourney Video and Luma Dream Machine Ray 3 reduced the entire sequence to a simple camera pan from the archer to the tower, yet Midjourney demonstrates a far cleaner sense of motion and depth. In my previous tutorial, I talked about the source material, the image we feed into the video AI. Let me quickly show you how I built the base image for this test in five steps. Some AI image generators, including Midjourney, still struggle to render longbows, arrows, and hand placement correctly. Out of roughly 50 generated images, only a handful were usable, and even those needed adjustments. Step one is straightforward. Write a clean, precise prompt. That's where ChatGPT comes in. If it doesn't work on the first try, just rerun it or fine-tune the phrasing. The example you see here already delivers a good baseline. Step two is image generation. I use Midjourney for that. If you test it yourself, you'll notice the same inconsistencies. The arrow position, the bowstring tension, the hands. Even if the image looks fine at first glance, something usually feels off. Proportions, lighting, or object placement. You could rerun it endlessly until it finally works but that's just a waste of credits and time. If an image has the right character, I move on to step three, nano banana. In this case, I like the lighting and tower from one version and the archer from another. So I told nano banana, remove the person from the image. Instantly done. Then for the other image, remove the background. Now I had both elements separately. Technically, I could ask Nano Banana to combine them, but I prefer keeping control over the composition. That's where step four comes in, Adobe Photoshop. I merge the two layers manually, background first, then the archer, and fine tune light and tone. Pay special attention to the arrow. In Midjourney's version, it looked strange. By adjusting it myself, I know it's right. That's the file I then save as a JPEG. 
Nano Banana still exports images at 1,344 by 768 pixels. That's not enough for production. So the final step is my preferred upscaler, Topaz Gigapixel. Just drop the image in, choose a 4x4 upscale, and hit Export Image. On the left, you'll see the pixelated original. On the right, the clean, detailed final. Perfect? Not quite. But at some point, you have to draw the line. That's the image you then take into the video model of your choice. Let me close with seven lessons I took away from this test. Complex scenarios that rely on real physics, gravity, motion, or logical cause and effect, require patience, credits, and time. When things don't work right away, frustration builds quickly. Once again, it's obvious the prompt is the key to success. A small error, a single missing or extra word can throw the whole structure off. Even slight redundancy can make the AI assume there are two of something and simply add one. That's how, in some versions, a second tower suddenly appeared. Or when the prompt mentioned a quick glance to the side, the AI decided to focus entirely on the face instead. Even the combination of shoot and bow turns out to be problematic. What becomes clear again and again is this. The more complex a prompt becomes, the more confused the AI seems to get. And that leads to those odd arrow trajectories or erratic camera movements. There's no guarantee that any video AI platform will execute exactly what you want, especially when clear physical rules are involved. In this test, Kling, Hilo, Ray3 and Midjourney performed well. Watch how Kling gets the hand motion exactly right. But when it comes to meeting the full challenge of this tutorial, almost none of them truly succeed. If you want to master a scenario like this, there's no way around start and end frame. The AI needs those defined boundaries, but even that doesn't guarantee success. In a setup like a standing archer shoots an arrow, combined with the instruction, camera follows the arrow moving, you'd assume the AI would follow the arrow, but far from it. In most results, the archer moves instead and the camera moves with them. It's frustrating that so many platforms still operate under the logic of give us your credits. Whether it works or not, we can't promise. That's a real problem, because we users pay a high price over time. Not just in money, but in patience and hours spent testing what should by now be basic logic. A final note on a few selected platforms. I expect every platform to show me, just like an online shop would, how many credits a generation will cost before I hit generate. On Runway Gen 4, for example, that's not the case for image to video. You have to dig through the documentation first. The redesign of the site, to put it mildly, doesn't help. The old Act 2 is now called Perform. Under All Tools, you'll find the familiar tiles, but if you click Apps in the top left navigation, you suddenly get a completely different interface with icons and shortcuts. There are now standard, almost gimmicky effect modules. I assume the idea was to make the platform easier for a broader audience. But in doing so, Runway risks alienating its long-time users. Sometimes optimization can backfire too much all at once and you leave people more confused than before. Sora 2, on the other hand, produced nothing at all. Every attempt was blocked. That's confusing especially when Fal AI openly advertises Sora with examples showing real people. Why promote that if the model itself refuses to render any scene containing one? And then there's VO 3.1, my biggest disappointment. The image quality is phenomenal, no question. But the basic idea that an arrow should actually leave the bow never seemed to register. Instead, the result looks more like a giant person holding a pointer toward the tower. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.